and welcome back. In this last series of lectures, we're going to talk about combinational logic blocks. Again, this is all the umbrella of synchronous digital systems. Combinational logical blocks say, let's see if we can build larger blocks out of combinational logic elements that are powerful and really useful for our data path. So we're going to start with data multiplexers and what they mean. Data multiplexer is very much like a flag person whose job it is to take n lanes of, <laughs> you draw this here, n lanes of, uh, of highway from, from this area of the 101, and maybe n lanes of highway from the 5, I have to do Southern California vernacular, and there's only one bridge, and all of 101 and Route 5 have to take one bridge, and this signal line is going to tell you which of those drives. When this signal line is 0, then A drives the bridge. When this signal line is 1, then B drives the bridge. And C is either 1 or 0, never both. Okay, So that's the idea of a MUX. So way we can think about it, that was an n-bit input MUX, so the n-channel input MUX with one different one signal line. You can think of this as being n instances of a 1-bit wide MUX. So let's actually talk about a 1-bit wide MUX and how to build that. And then maybe you can learn how to build the larger one I showed you on the previous slide of the n-bit wide MUX. So how many rows in this truth table? Okay, pause for a second and see if you can figure out the answer, and I'll tell you in two seconds. All right, welcome back. The number of rows, how many inputs do I have? I'm counting one, two, three. That's three inputs. Three bits is eight rows, okay? There's my eight rows, which basically says the following. It says, well, let's look at this. Well, I've got, when S is zero, S is zero, what is C? Let's look at it. C is essentially whatever A is. Look at that, that's exactly the same as the output. When S is 1, C is whatever B is. Really useful, right? So see how this is the same thing, okay? So that's pretty cool. So that's a way to think about this. But let's say we don't see that that's, that that way. Let's try to boil this down to the simplest logic that'll actually make this work. We're going to try to eventually try to make the simplest form of logic, fewest gates to implement our one bit wide mux, okay? Well, canonical form says sum of products, okay? So let's do this. Every row that's review. Every row that's a 1, we say, what term is it? That's a 1 when it's not S and A and not B. There's that first term. And you do this for all four terms to give you four terms. Then you put your, get your, dip your hands into your Boolean massage lotion and start working that equation. Work that equation. All right, here we go. Well, I can already pull the S out. Here, here's, here's, sorry, the not S. Pull that guy out. Maybe I'll use my pen <clears throat> to do that for me. So that here, what, what's the law that allows me to go from here, this term, to that term? Distribution. I call it reverse it because you're kind of reverse distributing out there, but it's a lot of distribution. Okay. Same thing here. Okay. Same idea here. And how about this? How about this inner term? How do you go from there to there? This is the same thing. I'm just distrib reverse distributing out A and B out of that term. Well, how about this one? What's this one? Remember this law? What's this? B or not B? Yeah, the law of complementarity. Okay? So that tells me that that's one. Now, how about what? How do you go from here to here? That's the identity property. That, you should remember that. Hopefully, you remember that from, from algebra. Yielding this really simple not S, A, or S and B. Now, let's think about that. Not S, then you're A. Or when S is high, it's B. It's almost like you're learning from. It's almost like you could go straight from here to this. It's what's what's the output C? Well, if not S, me S is zero, meaning not S, then it's A. Or when S is one, it's B. So actually, you almost don't need any of this stuff. You could go straight from here to here. And in fact, as we go to the next one, you're kind of you. I was kind of talking my way through this already. You could almost go straight from here really to this one, which is when S is zero, it's A. S is one, it's B to here to there. So actually there is a shortcut really this way to that way to think about that. Okay? So S is 0, it's A. S is 1, it's B. And that's the same thing. Think about that. Take, if you don't if you see that one-to-one -one connection between these two things, take some time to think about that before you move on. Kind of neat, right? That's kind of cool. All right. So how do we buy, build a one-bit wide mux? None of this is new. This is all review. Not S and A or S and B. There it is. Piece of cake. Pretty simple. Not S and A or S and B. Seen that before, nothing really special there. Okay, now let's put, throw a little curveball. Let's put a spit on this ball and throw a curveball now. All right, how about a four to one mux? Huh? 
How do you do forward row mocks? Let's think about this. Well, now my signal line has two bits because I've got to choose from among four inputs. I didn't tell you this is a four by one, four to one, one bit mux. Each of these guys are one bit wide. Well, what do I have? Well, look at this. I've indicated here, and do this yourself. Indicate, if you ever write a mux, what the value of the signal is for each of these guys. You notice I did in the last one as well. I wrote a zero and a one there. Same thing here. So it's unambiguous who wins. So if S is one, one, it's going to be D. So as, I, as S has the numbers value zero through three, you know who's going to win. And here's a little table here. You know, E, the output, is going to be A, B, C, or D, depending on whether S has the value zero, one, two, or three, respectively. Okay? So that's nothing special. How do you build this one? First of all, let's ask ourselves, how many rows to the truth table? Pause. Thought about it, right? Okay. Well, I count six input lines. I count four guys there total and two here. That's six lines. Two to the six is 64. Okay. So I count 64. Boy, really? I got a, a truth table that's 64 long and it's like six inputs over there and then one out. I mean, really? It's a lot of numbers. 64 times seven numbers. It's like six input lines and one output at seven and for everyone. Seven times 64. I don't want to do that. Sorry, I ain't doing it. Is there another way to do it? So by the way, here is, here, okay, by the way, I'll just give you a, a freebie. I could do that, or I could go straight to the answer. How, what's the answer? You saw that before. Before it was not S and A or S and B. Can you go straight to the answer here? Yes, and bam. Check this out. This is saying E, the output is, not S and not, not S1 and not S0 and A, or not S1 and S0 and B, etc. Isn't that cool? So kind of the aha that we got from the last slide yields us, lets us save our time rather than having to make any truth table and have to do any Boolean algebra massaging, put that bo Boolean algebra lotion away. I'm ready to go straight from the idea of a mux to its equivalent not necessarily canonical form, but pretty tight form uh, to describe a four to one, one output mux. That's pretty cool, okay? So think about ways you can do shortcuts rather than having to go, well, I know how to do truth tables because I got to slog through that one. It's like any game, I just got to grind through to get those points. Stop grinding. Just go straight to the output if you can. If there's a shortcut, jump right in. Ikea is great. They have this special path where you can go straight to the register rather than have to wind your bubble away. Do the Ikea you know, trip. Do the kind of optimization like that. And if you wanted to see this, here's the equivalent. Look at this. Here's the value. Basically, look at this. This is the connection straight from here to that. So I can go I can go from here to that, or I can go here to this, to there. I can go straight from here to there, because I know how to do this now. I'm, I'm fluent now enough with this. So think about how to go straight to the answer. It's pretty cool. Now, how do I wire this up, though? I could, as I said, I could either think about that way to wire it up. I could think about you know making the... The, the, the product of it's the sum of those four terms. Or is there a way to think about another way to think about how, I mean, when I have, I, I don't know, let's say four basketball teams and I have one national championship. How do I do that? How do I get those four basketball teams, you know, to have a final winner? Do I do this where the mucks and a table? No, they play against each other. You have these two teams play and then there's a winner from the Western region and these two play and then there's a winner from the Eastern region. They play in the championship game, right? Hopefully Cal comes up the winner on top. So hierarchically, that's the aha. The aha is this recursive or hierarchical way that you can wire them. Can you see it? Can you already see it? Isn't that cool? So you can think of S0 and S1 as wiring together three, two, three of these two to one muxes. And there's my four to one mux. This whole, by the way, if I draw a box out here, look, Folks, that's my four to one mux. But inside of it are three two to one muxes. Isn't that cool? I think this is really neat. So then we're gonna see this, there's a lot of ahas here. And the aha here is you can make use of other blocks rather than going, well, gotta make 64 rows and do some algebra to build it. You could do that. Or you could just wire this together and, and obviate the need for touching a truth table at all. No truth table needed, just wire them like this. What's great about this, if you play with this, is you've got, here's my S0, S1, watch. When S, these guys are S0 is 0, 0. Who's going to win? Let's try it. Should be A. Well, S0 says, well, that's going to come through. A is going to be on that line. And this one says C is on that line. And 
S1 determines who wins of that tournament. Well, if that's zero, then A gets to win. So when it's zero, zero, it's A, et cetera. Let's just see, how about one, one? Let's just do a one, one test. Say so one, 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 one. So that means D wins. So D's here and B wins. That's a different, whole different tournament, whole different final, final, final game. And then S1 is one, so D comes through. So when it's one, one, it's D. Isn't that neat? So this is a powerful idea that says, one, we don't have to go through the pedantic slogging through, grinding our way through to make a 64 row truth table. I can say, wait, you know, I could actually build this, build this block out of smaller blocks I know about. And as you get more and more fluent in digital logic and combinational circuits and, and, and Boolean, Boolean algebra, you can realize you don't have to always go back to the, back to the beginning to build your truth tables and do, I mean, that was crazy, that's crazy. So we like the idea of being smart about things sometimes and, and cascading things in this way, uh, which is really, really nice. Turns out that, the, I mean, when A is gonna be chosen, there's still work done over here, but it's hardware. These things are always moving, always doing it. They just don't, don't get chosen. You know, it's like the, uh, the person who doesn't get chosen to, 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 to win. I mean, that's, that's it is. A is gonna come through. This is a zero and that's a zero. A is gonna go in. I don't even care. They're doing work, but they never get to see, they never see the light of day. It's almost like the, you know, the whoever doesn't win the presidency did all that work and didn't matter anyway. You weren't chosen. Same idea, right? A lot of people put work into it and then at the end of the day, nobody won. By the way, vote. <laughs> I don't care what year this is, what year this video gets played, make sure you vote, make sure you put in your, uh, you apply your democratic um, rights. Uh, please make use of that and vote, have your representation known, very important. All right, we'll see you at the next lecture.